Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets weekly webinar uh, with myself, market analyst David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 9th of October and the time has just gone 12.15pm. Um, as always, um, we will be. I will leave the risk warning slides here on the screen if you have a read through yourself. Uh, it just basically states that whatever we, we cover in today's webinar uh, is just basically commentary uh, and my own personal views. Um, and, and talk and discussions of what's going on in the financial markets. It shouldn't be construed as an explicit investment or trading advice. Uh, uh, it, it, it's a necessary part of the actual webinar itself. It will keep my compliance department happy by, by me doing so, uh, but this, it won't take for very long. We leave it on the screen for a few more seconds, and then after that, we can actually kick off with, with the webinar itself. Um, there's obviously been some a few, a few economic indicators and some political uh, proceedings over the weekend, which we can now uh, crack on with the webinar properly. Uh, so I'll have a quick look uh, at what has, what has gone on uh, within the past number, uh, within the past uh, few days. Obviously, the Catalonian situation and standoff has is uh, is still very much in play. There was a kind of a pro unity rally yesterday in, in, in Catalonia and also uh, around Spain. Uh, and Spain kind of projected the kind of public image that they actually wanted to uh, to, to send out. Uh, it, there was no this was the direct opposite of the previous Sundays. Um, previous Sundays uh, scenes whereby um, we saw we saw there was a very heavy-handed approach by the police. This yesterday's ones were direct opposite, so we have seen a bit of a cooling of tensions. Um, also, it does appear to take more of a political and financial route, whereby the Spanish government are not making it easier for companies with headquarters in Catalonia to relocate the headquarters to a different region of Spain, applying a bit of financial pressure to the Catalan separatists. And also the Spanish government have actually uh, blocked or prevented the prevented the Catalonian parliament from, from meeting today. And it's only at one of those meetings can actually Catalonia actually declare independence. The president of, of the region cannot do it himself. So, so we have seen a bit of a bounce back in the, in the Spanish market. Looking uh, around Europe, uh, we have seen a bit of a we have seen the, the FTSE pull back recently um, in the um, sub or sub the seven uh, seven thousand five hundred level. Uh, we do see, it appear to be seeing a bit of a sell off. Uh, we we have seen uh, a push higher in the British pound, and in turn, we have seen a bit of weakness in the FTSE one hundred. Uh, what we saw overnight out of China, the service figures, the Kaishin private sur uh, survey of Chinese Chinese figures, Chinese service sector uh, grew at its slowest rate in 21 months. There was a very minimal growth. Uh, it came in below expectations. There's a decline in the month. Uh, it's a sent, sent out a, it was a bit of a, I didn't have a major impact on the markets over in the Far East, but we have seen a bit of a sell off in some of the mining companies that are listed here in London because traders are a bit fearful. I think the Chinese economy maybe isn't growing um, as much as it is, uh, as, as it would like to. Also, Beijing have been making a concerted effort to move away from a more uh, heavy industry, manufacturing, construction-driven economy to a more service-based economy, which they've broadly been doing, say, for the past 12 or 18 months. But unfortunately, uh, today's number was just kind of a bit of a spanner in the works and is obviously going to uh, unsettle some investors uh, nerves. Uh, it's going. It, it is a. It, it is a holiday in Japan, so the Japanese market was closed overnight. So there's relatively low vol vol volatility in Asia. Today is Columbus Day in the United States of America, so we can also expect low volatility on that front. Uh, and obviously, we did have the um, non-farm payrolls numbers out of the U.S. last week. Yeah, we, we saw a decline in the headline number, but there was upward revision to the previous month. There was a decline in unemployment and a very hefty uh, increase in the wage numbers. Uh, so overall, I think it was a decent report. But to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that negative number actually uh, revised to a positive number next month. Obviously, with the hurricanes, uh, Harvey and Irma, there's obviously been a bit of a skew to it. But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that number. Um, if, I'll be surprised if that number remains as it is. Uh, taking a quick look at the week ahead, um, I will show you every, every single week. Where it is on our website. So if you go to our website itself, under the news and analysis section, uh, click on the news and analysis section. This will bring you to the page here. Under filter by topic, third one down, the weekly outlook. Taking a look here at the weekly outlook, it effectively gives you a breakdown of the major corporate and economic stories 
we can look, look ahead to during the week. So turning to tomorrow, uh, we've UK, we have numbers out of the UK, manufacturing numbers coming out of the UK. Tomorrow we also have an update from the fashion house Ted Baker. Uh, and then uh, towards the back end of the week, we have the US, banking, US reporting season kicks off again. Uh, and we have the banks, the major banks, uh, are, the, are the ones to watch out for this week. Uh, we, we have updates from JP Morgan, Citigroup, and, and, uh, and Bank of America. There's also Wells Fargo, I believe, as well. And then on, at, the end of the, at the end of the week, uh, the big one to watch out for will be Chinese, da Chinese trade data. Obviously, keeping an eye on the imports and the exports uh, is obviously going to have a big, big, potentially big impact uh, on companies which are heavily exposed to China, such as mining companies like Rio Tinto and um, Glencore, and also and all, and all, and other, and other mining companies like um, BSG Billiton. Also playing into that mix in, into the, in the China story are companies like HSBC, very large exposure to, to Asia, uh, Standard Charter as exposure to, to the Far East as well. Diageo have been a big and Burberry have also been a big seller to uh, to, to China as well. Scrolling down on the corporate uh, on the corporate front, we've already kind of covered the, uh, the major stocks which are, which are reporting this week. It's also worth pointing out BlackRock have, have uh, third quarter numbers out on Wednesday. Domino's Pizza have numbers out on on Thursday. Um, we also have, we have full year figures from W H Smith on on Thursday. And on, on Friday, uh, as I mentioned, we have Bank of America and we also have Merrill Lynch. They're the big ones to watch out for from the United States on Thursday. So taking a look now at the, uh, the FTSE 100, as I mentioned, uh, the kind of push higher in sterling has uh, in turn uh, taken a bit of the edge off the FTSE 100. Uh, but we did see a fairly decent kind of move, uh, up, up, upward move in the FTSE last week. If you take a look at how the FTSE has been performing, it's... Been, it's uh, we see we appear to have kind of snapped out of the kind of the, the kind of sideways downward trend, uh, the downward trend that the, that the market has that was in uh, throughout the summer, uh, pushed higher uh, fairly decisively. And granted, we are seeing a bit of a turnaround now, but notice how the momentum, the kind of um, the kind of moves to the upside, has been kind of matched by an, an increase in kind of positive momentum. Granted, we are seeing a bit of a slight cooling or stalling of it to, on today's session, given that we have we have pulled back. Uh, about you know from today's high, we have pulled back around 45 points. But the broader kind of um, a sentiment and also the kind of the, the, the chart has been pushing higher for a number of weeks now. So I suspect the, the overall kind of upward trend that we've seen for uh, the last few weeks is likely uh, to could, could uh, remain intact. And should uh, should we can kind of remain north of should we remain north to kind of 7,500, the outlook could continue to be positive. Even if we do pull back, um, you know, given how much we, we how, how many uh, positive uh, candles we can see here, even if we do have, even if we do drop below seven thousand five hundred, we could also potentially find support in around this price area here of seven thousand four hundred and sixty one. Moves to the upside, um, if, if we do continue, if you do resume the wider, uh, so if we do resume the, the upper trend that the market's been in for a few weeks now. We could be looking towards the August high of 7,552, and then if that level is taken out, uh, we could be looking towards the all-time high of 7,599. As always, uh, I'm going to go through the major indices, major, major um, commodities, major currencies, and any markets that I that you that you would like for me to cover. Just feel free to stick it in the chat box, and I'll happily kind of run down. Um, what we what I can happily kind of run through whatever markets you would like me to, to have a look at. The Germany market, the German market, the Germany 30, obviously do, doing quite well. Uh, not too far away from record highs, so that is your that is automatically your your indication right there. Uh, the price is the most important indicator. We're not too far away from record highs. We've had quite a considerable push to the upside. <coughs> excuse me, over the last few weeks. So even if you do see a bit of a correction, even if you see a pullback, we could find support in around this level here, the low here um, from, from, from last Wednesday in at uh, 12,893 and then south of that in at 12,847. Uh, so th these are the areas for potentially, uh, we, we, if, we, if we do see a bit of a pullback, the areas we could potentially see some buyers enter the fold given that, that, the, what, that the trend has been to the upside and, we are, and we're just off all time highs. So to the upside, we'd be looking towards 13,000, and then as it's as it will be, you know, um, fresh territory, traders will then be keeping an eye off of the big numbers 
like 13,100, 200 and so on. Uh, don't worry, Michael, I will certainly be covering Brent Doyle uh, in, in a few charts time. And as you can see, well, as we look at the Spanish shirt here, the, the, the IFX 35, the first thing you notice is that it's even before the Catalan chaos kicked off, which was in around here, uh, early October, we can see that the Spanish market was already in decline. It didn't have the same first hire uh, from September onwards, uh, like, 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 like that we saw in the DAX. It was already pushing lower. Um, we have managed to actually kind of have managed to kind of push back up uh, close kind of in around the 200 day moving average the 200 day moving average is pretty much in around this area here somewhere in the region of 10,240 10,245 so that's obviously a, a, an important um, barometer to keep an eye on and notice how negative momentum has actually been declining so we could see so the, so the selling pressure that has been in existence for the last few days has been declining hence we're seeing we're seeing that the price push higher but even before the Catalonian situation kicked off, we did seem to have problems and trouble getting north of the 50-day moving average. So that level has acted as resistance in the, in the past, so it could potentially act resistance uh, in the near future. And, it, and, and the current level of the 50-day moving average is in at 10,345. If you do happen to break that, that will be like potentially put uh, like could potentially send the market even higher again. And if that were the case. Potential levels to watch out for to the upside would be the kind of mid August high of 10,445 and then north of that at the 100 day moving average at 10,525. Notice how the, the 100 day moving average did act as a bit of a support to the downside in July, but then of course it kind of flipped around and then acted as resistance uh, once the market was actually below that metric. So I think we're potentially at a fairly key level, we're, we're, we're close ish. To a, what, what could be a very interesting uh, area for the Spanish 35, the IBEX 35. Uh, the U.S. markets are in quite quite an impressive shape. Uh, last week we saw well the Dow Jones and the S&P finished a touch lower on Friday, but it's been a very much an, an upward trend uh, and kind of buying on the dips has been a popular strategy for traders uh, when they're trading the U.S. markets. So as we can see here, this is just all record highs, slight pullback. In September, only to be going to uh, only to be followed by a continuation of record highs. So, if you do see any kind of moves lower in the Dow Jones, you could potentially find support in around 22,700 or 22,634, and then back down towards 22,500 potentially. But as you can see here, the trend is clearly to the upside. It's a bit concerning that we are seeing possibly a standing still or maybe a slight decline in positive momentum. So we could be seeing a bit of the, the power behind the bulls could be waning ever so slightly. But as I mentioned, price is the, is the, uh, the indicator to, is the most important indicator. That's going on, reaching registering record highs. That's the one uh, that will take precedence. It is, it is also worth pointing out today is Columbus Day in the United States. So we may most likely see low volumes, low volatility. We probably, but we will, we will, the U.S. markets will be back to full swing tomorrow. Um, it's a very similar looking chart for the S&P 500, whereby uh, we have seen positive momentum uh, weighing us ever so slightly, uh, but but the, the price has been going on to, re to registering record highs. So it's a very similar chart for the S&P 500. Uh, moves to the upside because it's fresh territory. Traders are looking towards the big numbers like 2,560, 70, 80, so on and so forth, uh, where it's been, once again, pull, buying and uh, buying into the market on a, on a correction, on a pullback has, has been a fairly popular strategy. So if you do see any moves lower in the S&P, we could get, get some support in a 2,540 or 2,531, or further south of that, at 2,520. As I mentioned with the, S, uh, with the Dow, Keep an eye here on the momentum ever so slightly coming off. So it could be a sign that after you get a fine buying pressure is running out of ever so slightly out of steam. Um, but um, just keep just just keep an eye on that. Uh, it's only if, if it's only if you see a sharp decline in the price in momentum that is something that, that would be actually a bit concerning. And I will cover copper. No worries, Michael. I'll do that in a second now. Uh, coming on to the gold market. Um, 
as I mentioned, the equity markets, broadly speaking, have been, have been quite positive. So in turn, the gold market has been fairly negative over the last month, but we have seen a push higher. So gold basically lost $100 between this high here in September, which was a 13-month high. It's pulled back about 100 bucks. And in the, the wake of last Friday's non-farm payroll, kind of ground ground gold a bit lower, uh, near nearly as low as twelve sixty. It didn't quite get there, but this is effectively a hundred dollar move here that we've seen in the downside. Notice how in the last few sessions we have seen a fairly clear decline and positive but a negative momentum rather. So it could be an indication that the bears are kind of and their energy is kind of running out of steam. So we could see a push higher uh, from here in gold. And if that were to be the case, a uh, plenty level to watch out for was in around the 1296 region. Because the 1296 region is in around where the 50 day moving average uh, is. Notice how that metric acts as a bit of support in this area here on the way down at the end of, of September. It's also worth pointing out that in there on the kind of 1295, 1296 area, that was also the same area whereby it was kind of the highs that we saw in both April and also in June. So this, this area here could actually be a fairly important uh, level to keep an eye on for the price of gold. Should we break north of 1296, uh, obviously the psychologically important the 1300 level is going to be then on the cards. North of that, we'd be looking towards in around the kind of 1316 region. And then beyond that, uh, the, kind of, the, kind of the, the pullback from the kind of mid September sell off in a, at a 13.34 in here, and then beyond that again in these 13 month high, which is created in September at 13.58. It is possible, though, uh, bearing in mind that the, the likelihood of, a, of an interest rate from the Federal Reserve has ticked up, ever, has ticked up on the back of those non farm, farm payroll figures. We also heard from Patrick Harker last week of the Federal Reserve, who said the Federal who said the US Central Bank is penciling in another rate rise. Um, some people out there have their doubts about that, given that, that the debt ceiling debate is going to be held in December. We also don't know the likelihood, we also don't know what the Fed makeup is going to be like in a few months' time. But if the US Central Bank, if, if, if prominent central bankers are talking about the rate is penciled in, it's something that really shouldn't be ignored. Um, so if, if you do see uh, the, the price of gold kind of turn over on itself, um, and it, it does kind of res resume the kind of the downward move that it's been in since the mid since the early part of last month. We could be looking back down towards 1260, and then south of that, uh, potentially at the 200-day moving average at 1253. And then if if that level is taken out, it could take us back down towards the July low of 1204. I'll have a quick glance now at high-grade copper. If you're, going to be, if you're going to be trading high grade, high grade copper, just be mindful that, that China has uh, trade data out at the back end of the week. It'll be out on the early hours of Friday morning. Keep an eye on the imports component of that because that would give an indication of how mineral hungry uh, China is. Um, and also even the exports will also give indication of, of, of uh, what their kind of international trade is like as well. So just be mindful of the, of the, uh, of the numbers we have from China coming out at the back end of this week. So as we can see here, copper's had quite a positive run from the back from the kind of end of, of last year. As I kind of quite broadly speak, it's been a nice decent decent upward trend. What we can see here is though that after we did have a a probably a, you could say an, an overdue correction. I know it's a it, it's a fairly decent move to the downside. But when you compare it in, in comparison, how much ground it covered from here from the kind of say 12.45 up to 13.50, and then we got from 13.15 down to 12.88 in that kind of region it's still percentage wise uh, it isn't a, a major it isn't a major correction on the uh, the copper market and now we do seem to be actually pushing higher again and we could it, this could be a sign that we are seeing uh, a resumption of the wider positive trend uh, for the price of high-grade copper so if we do manage to hold north of the 50-day moving average here which notice how sort of acted as support here but then when it broke below it it was trying very difficult to get north of it and then this candle here last thursday smashed through it so it could be this could be the kind of um a potential kind of foundation uh for the potential next upward move in the price of copper so if we do stay north of the 50 day moving average which is comes into play at um 296.95 
we could potentially see a, uh, a, a continuation of the, of the bullish move. Uh, move to the upside, uh, three or potential resistance at uh, three or five seventy nine, and then beyond that at uh, thirteen uh, thirteen fifteen spot zero nine. One of the reasons why I like to use the kind of the, well the MACD uh, indicator, uh, moving at moving average conversions and, and divergence, uh, the histogram is so you can actually get so you can actually see what the kind of which way the kind of momentum is moving. And what you can see here is notice how that when the price of of, um, of copper was was pushing higher, it has swung from being negative momentum to positive momentum. But the positive momentum here, the price was pushing higher, but the positive momentum here wasn't overly impressive. It was sort of standing still and it wasn't really growing all the while. The price was kept in ratcheting up. So price is the one you want to follow. But if the rate at which the price is increasing isn't overly impressive, that could be a sign, an early indication. That the buy that buyers are running out of steam, and lo and behold, you have a decent correction here in September, and there's a very aggressive swing from positive momentum to negative momentum, and that was increasing all the way down here uh, until this, this in, in around this price area here. So we could see the price was the, the selling pressure was starting to decline in around here all the while the market actually turns around. So this is a good example of what I like to use this indicator, that the MACD indicator. As you can see here, it's now swung to, to, to positive momentum. So, and, and the positive momentum of the last few days has actually been increasing. Therefore, you can be more confident of the move because it's, you, you would want to see the momentum confirming the direction of the actual move itself. So I hope that answers your question there in relation to high grade copper. Uh, taking a look now at what's going on in the oil market. Uh, over the weekend, um, Hurricane Nate was downgraded to a tropical storm. So... Going into the weekend, everyone was, was expecting, you know, big disruption to oil refineries. So it's quite likely that the more oil refineries are in operation in the United States than anticipated going into the weekend. And as you saw at the back of Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma, when the refineries were knocked, when the refineries were kind of effectively knocked out of commission, the demand to get oil into the refineries was, was, was weakened, and we saw prices fall. So we did see a big fall in, in the price of, of crude oil. Uh, at the back end of last week. Also, what was added to the news mix was Russia, who previously said on Thursday, this candle here, stating that they were looking, to, they were keen to extend the production freeze from the end of March 2018 out to the very end of December 2018. But then on Friday, they sort of doubled back on it and they said, oh, well, it's um it's something that we're open to, but it's not necessarily that we're going to be pre or, or something like that is that is a possibility. Uh, they kind of they, they, they sort of kind of seem to do a bit of a U-turn, and on the back of that, we have seen a bit of a decline in um in the, in the price of oil. But bearing in mind here, looking at Brent, it's been in a fairly decent upward trend since since the middle of June. Uh, so the, kind of the, the trend is your friend until it, until it come, comes to an end is the old market adage. So even though we have seen um, the price of Brent crude come off uh, in the last few weeks, this, this trend here, I, I suspect, is still potentially going to remain in place. But notice how the kind of negative momentum has actually been increasing. So we could potentially have further ground to, to, to lose before we possibly resume the wider upper trend. So if we do see further moves to the downside in Brent, it could take us down to $55 a barrel. Are down to the 200, are down to the 50 moving average, which is, comes into play in around 40, 40, sorry, 54 dollars per barrel, and then south of that, potentially support in around the 53 dollars per barrel region. The high here that we created in September was a 26 month high, so you're going to get a giving an, an indication of how bullish that move actually was. And if we do continue, if we do uh, um, turn around and, and resume. The wider kind of upward trend that has been in for a few months now, going on about four months, we could potentially target this level here at 57, 52, and then north of that at 59, 51, and then of course you're looking at then you're looking towards the kind of psychologically important 60 bucks a barrel for Brent. Uh, WTI didn't have as an as an impressive run. As I mentioned, when the U.S. refineries, or some of them, were out of commission on the back of both hurricanes Harvey and Irma, there wasn't the same major demand for, for, for WTI, so it was lagging in comparison to Brent, Brent crude. But as you can see here, since June, broadly speaking, the, up, the upward trend 
is still actually intact for the um, for WTI trading in around the 2 day moving average and also the, the 50 day moving average so this is an interesting level here for the price of WTI uh, that the metrics come into place it come into play in around the current level the 30 moving average is not too far away from the current price in around uh, $49.27 whereas the 50 day moving average is about 40 cents below that in the $48.87 so if you can hold on to this price region here you can potentially see maybe a further uh, continuation of the kind of wider upward trend up towards the September high of $52.53. And then if the September high is taken out, uh, buyers might be then look towards the um, the high from April in at $53.62. $53.56. But once again, notice how the positive the negative momentum is increasing. So we could see uh, we could see a further decline before we potentially see a, a wider uh, a, a, before we see a potential turn higher yet again. So if we do happen to kind of break up and break south of the 50-day moving average of 48 dollars at 87 cents, we could see that the, the market return down to the 48 dollar mark, or even perhaps the 100-day moving average at 47 dollars and 62 cents. Take a look now at some of the big currency pairs. Euro dollar first on the list. So as you can see here, essentially for the last month or so, the euro has been pushing lower. Um, we did see a bit of a, a bit of a turn around in the last couple of well, in, well, today and, and Friday, but that was probably more to do with profit taking on the US dollar because the US dollar has had a really good run well conversely if the, if the, week, the euro has had a weak week a week poor month conversely the dollar has had a good month so the moves here that we've seen in the last since since Friday basically probably more to do with the, the profit taken from the positive run of the dollar rather than confidence in the euro although we did see good German industrial production uh, numbers this morning and also there was some good factory numbers out of Germany at, at the back end of last week too uh, notice how, as the price has been pushing lower, we have seen a bit of a decline in negative momentum. So it could be an, potentially an early sign that the kind of setting pressure of the single currency is starting to kind of wane a bit. Um, so if we do push higher uh, on the euro versus the US dollar, we could see a head back up towards the 50-day moving average in around 118.44. And then if that level is taken out, we could head back up towards the kind of 120 region. Uh, if the US dollar kind of continues the, the, kind of, the, kind of the, the shorter term kind of positive move uh, that has been in over the last four weeks, we could see it back through 116.62 and then south of that at 116.13. And then if, if we go below that, it could take us back towards the kind of 115, 114, 80 uh, region. Uh, the pound versus the US dollar. So we can see here a decent move higher after quite a few, uh, after quite a, losing quite a bit of ground since the middle of last month. The pound has, has pushed higher and made a, kind of, kind of a fairly decisive move north of the 50 day, 50 day moving average. So if we can hang on to the 50 day moving average in at 131.52, we can potentially push higher. Up towards the 132.67 region or 133 region, and then north of that, we can look looking towards 134 or 134.52. This price action here, this could potentially be. Uh, notice how there's been a dip in negative momentum. So after this kind of this nice this uh in, in increase in in uh, in negative momentum, this could be the kind of the turning point. Whereby the market starts to kind of push higher on itself because let's face it, if you look at, if you look at the wider trend for the pound versus the US dollar since uh, since kind of March of this year has been broad, has been very much to the upside. We have seen some decent moves. We have seen some decent moves lower whenever some corrections when it has corrected itself, but the wider trend is still in place. So this could be the sign here. Keep an eye on the on the MACD. This could be the sign here that setting pressure is in, in decline.
keep an eye now on the euro versus the British pound, euro sterling. So keep an eye on the, uh, the euro versus the British pound here. Uh, what we're seeing is after quite similar, the, the, kind of the big picture since April, the euro has been in a fairly clear upward trend since uh, since April. Decent size correction uh, came into came into effect from end of August until the end of September. But if we could potentially look, be looking at a scenario that the kind of wider trend could, could potentially be uh, could be back on the cards. Notice how as the market was selling off aggressively here, we saw a very steep increase in negative momentum on the MACD indicator. But then as the market was kind of finding a bottom here, finding a base in around here, we saw the selling pressure on the, neg on the negative momentum indicator uh, dec uh, decline quite, quite consistently here, only to swing around into positive territory. So, and if you look at the price action here, it's it's uh, it's managed to come off the lows here from from late September. It's taken off. We're now above the 100-day moving average, and it's now kind of already kind of eyeing up the 50-day moving average. The next potential big hurdle for it to overcome. If it can hang on to this price here, the 100-day moving average, which is in around 18, uh, 89, 14, we could we could look for a retesting of the 50-day moving average in at at 90, 20. Notice how it did act as resistance here. Uh, after it, uh, it it broke below it, it tried to kind of regain it again a couple of occasions, but it, it wasn't quite successful. So it's a price area to watch out for there. And if you do take out the 50-day moving average, it could send us back on track up up towards 91, and then north of that at 92.26. And then of course, if we take out that level here, we we'll be looking potentially back towards the August highs. If you do, on the other hand, though, drop back below the 50, the the 100-day moving average. We're potentially looking back toward this price area here of around 87.38 to the downside. Keeping it up, and the last one, uh, big market we're going to have a look at now is going to be the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. Bearing in mind, probably not going to have a whole lot of movement in this currency pair. Japan was in holidays overnight, and we have, we have and a lot of people will be celebrating. Uh, well, a lot of people will be celebrating uh, Columbus Day in the United States, so volatility, I imagine, it will be quite low. Uh, what we can see here is that the kind of bigger picture has been to the downside, quite aggressive sell-offs, big bounce backs, uh, and then only, and then only, only last month they would go on and hit a multi-month low. But it's been in a fairly price-wise, it's been a fairly decent upward move and and and, uh, and bounce back in the U.S. dollar versus the yen, but it hasn't. Large bounce backs and large corrections hasn't really been uncommon. Uh, um, what we've seen in the dollar versus the Japanese yen. So you can see here in the kind of nearer term, the kind of the upper trend is very much in place. But if you look at the momentum indicator, it could be a sign that the buyers are running out of steam. We can see here the price is continuing on to push ahead nicely. Uh, you know, on Friday here we created a multi-month high. But we cr created that high on very obviously declining momentum. There's no guarantees to say that the momentum is necessarily going to keep falling or turn negative, uh, but it, it's just a bit. This is potentially a bit of a, what's called divergence when the price is clearly moving higher and the, and the MACD, the momentum indicator, is is moving lower. Could be a sign the buyers are running out of steam. Should the market turn over on itself and, and look to push lower, we could potentially find support in at the 30 moving average of 111 spot 90. South of that, back towards the water day moving average at 111 spot 10, and then take us down towards the the kind of one of the kind of big lows from September in at 109 spot 55. If you do push higher, if, if, if the price continues to push higher, we could uh, potentially find resistance coming into play at 113.87. It's, it's kind of the, the high here from the middle of, 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 Ju of June, and then of course, sorry, July rather, and then if if, if you do take out that level. A big area to watch out for is going to be the July high in 114.49, and that and that was just ever so slightly, slightly eclipsed the high here in May. So that'd be the next level to watch out for to the upside. As always, I give you I give you a quick rundown uh, of where other items are on our on our trading platform and also on our on our actual website itself. Uh, so what, what I'm looking at here is chart forum. This is updated by myself and the other other analysts um, here at CMC. 
it is a quick kind of snapshot of it. We take a, a snapshot of a chart and we'll write a few hundred words about it. What we think may or, or may not potential levels to watch out for on certain charts. That can be found under the trading pulse tab here. Click on trading, sorry, market pulse rather, and it is the third option down the chart forum. To the right of it, uh, what I have set up here is the, is the insights. Some of the some of the articles that we uh, that we do uh, here by the analyst team get posted to the website. Some of them get posted to insights, and the insights is the second option down here. It's also a good place to keep an eye on because the economic indicators that come out during the day will get updated. So, well, as soon as the the eurozone uh, investor confidence numbers come out this, this morning at half nine, I updated them there. In terms of corporate, in terms of economic calendar, it, that is the fourth option down on the market pulse. Uh, it's a, it's a good way to keep an eye on to, to know what economic indicators are coming out. As I mentioned, UK industrial numbers are coming out tomorrow morning. It'll give you the the forecast, what's expected, and it'll give you the also the uh, the previous month's number as well. Uh, Spanish CPI is going to be a bit going to be relevant. Uh, what's going on in Catalonia? And that's on a Wednesday. Uh, on Thursday, as always, we have, we have, we have the U.S. initial claims from the United States. We also have some industrial production numbers out of the eurozone, uh, and then on Friday, as I mentioned, the big ones to watch out for on the early hours of Friday morning will be the Chinese trade numbers. Uh, also, uh, keep an eye on uh, the events, the webinars, and events section of our of our um, website. Uh, this is where you found the the webinar that that that, that, uh, that, that I'm hosting at the moment. Uh, on Wednesday, on Wednesday the 11th of October, on, it's on a couple of days' time, uh, we have a, a webinar covering commodity trends. Uh, that is at 19.30 British Summer Time, half 7 p.m. London Time. Uh, well, as, as always, the Monday 12.15 um, webinar hosted by myself is, 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 uh, is on every single Monday at 12.15. At and then on Wednesday the 18th of October uh, at 19.30 British Summer Time, 7.30 p.m. London Time, we have a webinar covering next generation for an exchange. Uh, I, I want to thank you for your time and, and appreciation. Uh, have a good trading week. Good luck. And please tune in next week. Thank you very much.